Here we will review horizontal and vertical rear wheel placement to determine the ideal setup for a client. Horizontal rear wheel placement, referred to as center of gravity, and vertical wheel placement will affect shoulder ergonomics, impacting overall maneuverability, and will play a significant role in client satisfaction. When measuring for center of gravity, you will measure from the front of the back cane to the center axle. You can use a wheel spoke as a guide in order to get this measurement. Line one spoke perpendicular to the ground and follow the line upward. Take your measuring tape and line it up with the front of the back cane and end it in line with the rear axle. This is your center of gravity measurement for the wheelchair. Different wheelchair models will have different ranges of center of gravities. For example, this chair can achieve a maximum of four inches. Different models of wheelchairs will vary in the range of center of gravity and the increments for adjustment. Now let's go over how to perform a quick ideal check when a client is sitting in the wheelchair. I will invite my colleague to help me with this demonstration. Have your client sit comfortably upright with their arms down at their sides over the rear wheels. Again, you will want to pay attention to the center of the axle and maybe use a spoke to help you draw that imaginary plumb line straight upwards. Ideally, that line lands at or in front of the client's shoulder. If it is behind the client's shoulder, this is a more stable but less efficient setup. If it is in front of the client's shoulder, this is more efficient but could be less stable. Use your clinical rationale to determine what is ideal for each client you assess. Here, the axle is behind the shoulder. This can restrict access to the rear wheel for propulsion and places more of the client's weight over the casters. This chair will feel heavier. The axle is now in line with the client's shoulder. She can now access more of the hand rim for an efficient push stroke. This is a more mechanically efficient position. Once you have what you think could be the client's ideal horizontal setup, have the client propel the wheelchair in similar environments to their daily routine. This can include mobility on a variety of terrains, transfers, as well as daily activities. Make adjustments accordingly. Now that we have addressed horizontal placement, let's look at vertical axle adjustability. Vertical axle adjustability determines where the client sits between the rear wheels. It also plays a role in seat slope and seat to back angle, which we will not cover during this video. The rear wheel is vertically adjusted through the axle plate. Range and incremental adjustments will vary between wheelchair type and style. This wheelchair has 21 options in quarter inch increments. To check vertical axle height, have the client place their arms down at the side over the rear wheels. You will want to pay attention to the center of the axle and their middle finger. It should land on or near the axle. In this setup, you can see that she is too high in the frame of the wheelchair. This is not a proper setup for efficient propulsion. Further changes need to be made. When the client's middle finger reaches the axle, verify if this is a proper position for efficient propulsion. Measure the client's elbow flexion with their hand at the top of the hand rim. You are looking for 60 to 80 degrees of elbow flexion for ideal mechanical efficiency. Ideal is not the same for everyone. Here we have shown you a few tips and tricks on how to assess a client and make small incremental changes to a wheelchair for significant impact on client function and satisfaction. Always remember to select a wheelchair model with proper axle range and increments that will allow you to meet proper client setup today and build in adjustability for potential future changes as well as skill acquisition.